Hi guys, Morgan here. Just been happening in college and I can't really do my usual Blender art animations as of the moment. I think you can tell by now how many days would pass before another livestream would happen. But I decided that as for fun, I'll be showing you my PC setup that I use to make my Blender projects. Trigger warning to those PC nerds out there. You're going to see a lot of wires and a lot of fire hazards, so bear with me here. When I look at all the Blender artists saying that they work with some high-end computer with an RTX 3090 and 60 computer cores and some other PC jargon that might have come from a guy who's a fan of the Thesaurus, I think. Huh? Before, when I started my channel and was working on a little stickman character that I would later name Vanilla, I was working under this old Asus laptop. I can't remember the exact model of this laptop. I can't turn it on right now because the last time I used it was 2 years ago and all the documents that I had containing some information like details about specs and warranty had already been lost to time. But I can only describe my experience of it as meh. Do take note that I haven't even heard of Blender at that time. It was a dumbass compared to my giant IQ right now. I was only using low power programs like Windows Movie Maker and Microsoft Paint for some of my really early stuff and GIMP and Lightworks for my last few book reviews for the vanilla stickman character and my Frederick Snowflake webcomic, which I've mentioned in the stream a couple of times before. In late December of 2021, my dad brought me a new laptop to work with. At first I wanted to try and make some more 2D art webcomics and animation with it, but he didn't want that to happen. You see, in exchange for getting a laptop, I should learn how to 3D print from making the model in a own program from scratch and actually printing the model with a 3D printer. Specifically, he wanted me to print dentistry related things like dental casts, orthodontic liners, and surgical guides for implants since we are all doctors. But as a typical Asian son being asked to choose between going to med school or being disowned entirely, I reluctantly agreed, stopped making online content for a while, and started studying. This is how I learned Blender and other wacky features like Grease Pencil, Toon Shaders, and the Microscopic Anatomy of a Donut. I'll talk more about my Blender journey in another video. Let's move on with talking about the laptop that I'm currently using to this day. From then all the way to when I was streaming with my old snowflake model and making my college building and cake, I was only working with this piece of shit. It is a laptop made by a Chinese manufacturer named Machinite. So you know that my privacy is already at risk here. But hey, it comes with an RTX 2060, a midline GPU if you consider the crisis we had back in 2020, and an Intel i7 Gen 10 chip. From what I can tell from my numerous viewings of Linus Tech Tips, I had just enough to reach Blender's recommended requirements, which isn't its minimum requirements by the way, and I have used this laptop ever since for my live streams, 3D art, online classes, and other online things a guy in his 20s would usually do. However, I realized right away that working in Blender requires a free button mouse, which I thought was one of those ergonomic mouses that might be mistaken for a sex toy, but then I realized how stupid I was for not realizing that the mouse wheel was actually the preferred button they were referring to. So in other words, I just need a normal mouse. I think I already replaced my mouse twice already, ever since I've gotten this new laptop. But the one I'm using right now is the Razer Viper Mini. This costs around 900 Philippine pesos in this local online store that I brought from, which is not too expensive but also not too cheap either. The reason why I didn't go for the cheaper ones because from my experience, these things only last a few weeks before a few buttons break. And I'm not even a gamer that loses it whenever someone calls me sus. Okay. My god, I did not vent into north. Oh, I'm so triggered. The same goes for my keyboard as well. It's a Zeus K003 RGB mechanical keyboard. My last one only lasted weeks before it gave up on me. The reason why I brought a separate keyboard is because some keys in my laptop's built-in keyboard wasn't working anymore. Before you say how much of a sadist I am, I do think that the one drawback that I have with this mouse and keyboard is that it is RGB. Like, I don't get it, this looks ugly in the eye. I prefer to turn this off for my keyboard, but my mouse won't shut up about the LGBT for some reason. Oh, and hi, I'm a mechanical keyboard fan. You can meet me at the parking lot at 5pm for Fight Club. 
I started using Reese Pencil and Blender and felt the need to use pressure sensitivity with some of my artworks. I integrated my old drawing tablet. It's a Huion H640. It was given to me as a Christmas present back in 2018 and used it ever since. The reason why I have not switched to a screen tablet is because I am still using my parents' money and I don't want to ask too much from them. I mean, look at these prices, Jesus Christ. Plus, it comes with a battery free pen, which was a deal breaker for me. I'm actually shocked that Huion or any other tablet company haven't fully switched this kind of pen. I mean, considering that all hardware nowadays doesn't use replaceable power anymore, why would battery powered pens still exist? I just don't get it. This has remained my first and only tablet that I've ever used, so I can't really compare its performance with any other tablet in the market right now. But my mom and some of my siblings did use this before and commented on how awkward it is to use this person using it for the first time. I can also vaguely remember how awkward it was when I first used it with my old laptop. But once I used it more and more, I kind of gotten used to it and created my own tablet settings for the driver and the individual programs that I used it on to make it run much smoother. The only trouble that I have with this tablet is when it comes to using it for grease pencil and blender. But I'm guessing this is less of a hardware problem and more so because of my lack of experience in making sketches in 3D space. Now to those die-hard VTuber fans, I'm going to break the fourth wall right now. I'm not a wizard in this 3D realm, I'm actually the Ghost Rider. But when I stream in your plane of reality, I want to project myself as the wizard that I am in my plane of reality. So for that to happen, I use a Logitech 2K webcam latched onto my copy of Selection Day by Arvind Adika because I'm definitely a 6 foot beast booth with knowledge. A myth with VTubing is that people think I need some fancy pants jumpsuit with dots all over their eyes to even complete the business, but really all I ever need in the hardware side of things is a lousy webcam that you can buy anywhere. I mean, yeah you might need them if you want to give your audience the middle finger in virtual reality or run around an empty void, but come on guys, do you really want to touch grass like these weirdos? All you need to do is sit and look pretty and you're suddenly starting a new religion. A tracking software named VC Face is used to turn the data coming from the camera into movement for a 3D model I made using Blender and Unity. Based on experience, the only hard part of actually doing VTuber stuff is actually creating the model itself. With breaks, it took me a year to learn how to model and rig my own character. If I were to recommend some videos on how to make your own VTuber model, just find any Blender character model tutorial out there, and for the rigging side of things, I suggest this video made by Preachu. For efficiency's sake, don't forget to decrease the amount of vertices in your character by researching on retopology in Blender, and to know how to start making some basic facial expressions and mouth movement, I suggest looking into shape piece. This video made by Shafu and Shadi is an interesting introductory video on what shape keys are. What he talks about is shape keys used in animation, but the main takeaways in this video is very helpful when making your character more expressive. And do keep in mind that I'm a 3D VTuber, and not those 2D VTubers that you see more and more of. So, if you want to, I don't know, decrease the amount of dimensions that you have, uh, just Look, look for someone else. I'm not, I'm not the, I'm not the expert for that. Once you're done with that, as long as your computer has specs similar to mine, you can make some wacky stream elements with GIMP and Blender, and use OBS to start going live on your OnlyFans or something. One day around April or May of this year, I suddenly got interested in computer hardware and software. This is when YouTube started recommending me channels like Mine's Tech Tips, Distro Tube, Mental Outlaw and Jay-Z Two Cents. So when I was looking through these channels, I realized that some of them were using free screens in their PC setups. Keep in mind that I have seen other YouTubers with free screen setups before, but this was the first time that I thought, wait, can I do that as well? I know this is like asking what 1 plus 1 is to some of you, but back then, I was a huge dumbass who thought that I needed a dedicated PC screen to make this work. And that only works if your PC is the height and shape of all Minecraft block. Turns out there is a way to connect another display using a half slab, and this is through HDMI cables. Yeah, you remember that wire you used to connect your TV to some box that gives you access to different TV channels if you're subscribed to some cable network? 
Well, it turns out that same wire can be used to connect your laptop to any screen with an HDMI port. He asked my mom if she had any spare TV screens lying around in her dental clinic. And it turns out, God was having a good day today. Turns out, there's this huge flat screen just lying around on the man's second floor of that building. Not kidding. From the looks of it, the thing is still in near mint condition. And when I asked if I can have it, without question, he just, he just gave it to me. Sweet. So I took the TV home with me. I found HDMI cable from some old storage closet that I have in my house. Connected the two together, calibrated some settings in my laptop, and boom! Instant extended displays. After some time, I thought the gimmick of using extended displays is overrated when I look at the TV screen for most of the time. So later changed the settings to have the TV screen the only one working whenever the computer is turned on. It also gave me the added benefit of letting me use my laptop while it is closed. I know this is a war crime for some of you, but at this point, I don't think it's very ergonomic of me to stretch a full length while I sit in my monoblock chair. Did I tell you that I'm from Southeast Asia, by the way? A little while ago, I got annoyed that I would wake in the dark whenever my little brothers decided to sleep ahead of me. It feels really depressing, to be honest. But after a while, I brought this overhead lamp that barely latches on to my TV screen. Hey, I don't feel depressed anymore. Now I feel more like that one Instagram girl that won't shut up about Starbucks. Working with all of these devices meant that I needed more outlets for myself. So for my mouse, keyboard, and tablet, I brought a USB port extension with switches on them. I realized that right away that having four ports doesn't mean that all devices get powered though. Turns out, the power getting distributed from the laptop to the extension gets divided into the different active ports. Which means that some devices don't get as much voltage as some devices. That's why I could not connect my camera to the extension if I wanted to. It required more power to send image data to my computer. So I had to let the wire run at this awkward route toward the other side of my computer. For my audio devices, I have an audio splitter. And unlike my extension, it didn't run into any power issues. For sound, I use earphones. I don't like the fact that I look like an Eskimo whenever I wear headphones and... Come on, just just look at me. How, how am I even supposed to fit headphones in this big head of mine? I also purchased this microphone that came with an additional sound card. All it did was give me funny voices and some sound effects, and it irritated me that I had to charge it in order to use it. Ew! More wires! So I dumped it for good and just decided to connect the microphone directly to an audio splitter. If I wanted to modify my speech and get rid of some background noise, I just added some more filters in the audio input source in OBS. Thank god open source programs for communism exists. I also had to make room for cable extensions since I was running out of electrical sockets to plug stuff into, and wow, that's a fire hazard. Thank god I don't live in a country that recreates the events of Noah's Ark at the end of the year, oh wait. And this is my clunky setup, guys. This ain't the normal things I usually do in this channel. I just thought that this is a funny idea that I can post to break the monotony of the content I post in the vanilla log. And hey, maybe you learn a thing or two about making your own cheap PC setup like mine. Let me know if this is a thing you want to see me do more of in the future. I actually have a video essay script on hold right now. I don't know if I'll ever finish it or even want to finish it, but be on the lookout for that. Anyways, I'll go to sleep now. I'll go read a book.